Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So if you're used to seeing my videos and hearing my voice, you probably realize by now in this short amount of time that my voice is a bit deeper, uh, a bit huskier than it normally is. And uh, I have been fighting a cold for the last several days. We've had a sick household around here and so I'm keeping my fingers crossed that I do not get it, but uh, this is why my voice is a bit deeper it's a little bit more difficult for me to sort of push the words out from my throat, so I will do my best. But I wanted to get this video out because uh, I posted another video regarding stolen artwork that I will put in the description bar below if you've not watched that video and you would like to see it uh, before or after you watch this one. This is sort of a part two, I'm going to call it. Uh, because a lot has really happened since I posted that video. Um, and I also uh, received a, an email from a fellow YouTuber. She reached out to me on Etsy regarding this topic. And it's just very sad to see how prevalent uh, copyright infringement stolen artwork is. It's, it's even more prevalent than I had once found. I've been sort of digging into it a little bit since I'll explain what happened uh, to me after my previous video, but I've been doing a lot more digging into it since then. And it, it is a bit discouraging, but it's something that I feel is important to bring up again to have a second discussion on it because it's so important. So I am going to start out by saying before we go any further that I am not a lawyer. Um, uh, so if you have had your artwork stolen, if you have any questions about your artwork being stolen, what you can do um, to fight it, to prevent it, I highly recommend that you consult a lawyer yourself. I am just going to be sharing my personal experience. So please don't take it for word for word like what I'm telling you is exactly what you should do because every situation is different. So again, I'm just going to relay my information and then just gather that information to make your own best judgment. Okay, so having said that, I'm going to start reading the message that I received on eBay from or from uh, on Etsy from a fellow uh, Etsy and eBay seller and this is what she writes um i'm not going to share her shop name because i did not ask for her permission so i want to protect her privacy but she says hi ellen i came across your youtube channel searching for copyright information and etsy art theft uh, i have someone that is now reproducing my work and selling as her own i am on etsy and ebay uh, I am devastated and angry, to say the least. I am so stuck on how to proceed. Thank you for putting this out there. This has affected my emotions, my health, my finances. So discouraged with how prevalent this is. This is not the first one to do this, but she is doing the most damage. I am looking for information on how or if I should even continue. And this is just really... I feel really sad for her, for me, for anyone who has artwork that they're trying to sell um, on the internet because this is happening more and more often. Um, so what do we do about it? Well, let me share with you my story since my previous video. Uh, in my previous video, just to catch you up a little bit, I had mentioned that I was having artwork that was being put on phone cases, pillows, household items, but it was outside of the country and therefore there wasn't anything that I could really do about it um, after having consulted uh, with a lawyer, doing a lot of reading. It just, you know, the laws are different outside of the country. So I pretty much just set that aside, tried not to worry about that and just concentrate on what I could control um, and realize that the pros still outweighed the cons. Okay, well, since then, I have one particular uh, 
piece of artwork that is extremely popular. And I get requests all the time from people that have seen my work on Etsy from just Google search uh, in general asking if they can use my artwork for lots of different things, um, for sports teams, for, um, for school yearbooks, for, I mean, for lots of things. And I always say no. I, I mean, I'm grateful that they want to use it and I'm grateful that they asked for permission because most people don't, but I always have to decline because once you let go of a high resolution image, which is what people are going to require if they are going to uh, reproduce your work onto something that they need, like let's say a school yearbook, they're gonna need a high quality image. The minute you release that to somebody, you are basically, even though you're not technically handing over the copyright, you can state that you're not handing over the copyright, but anytime you release a high quality image, you are essentially giving that away um, and it can potentially be abused. They can recreate prints, whatever. So I always thank them for asking, but I respectfully decline just because I need to be able to protect my work as much as possible. So I was doing reverse Google image lookup, which I mentioned also in my last video. This is one way that you can keep track of your artwork and where it is on the internet. You just upload a, a uh, photo of whatever it is that you want to see, where it's located, you, you upload the photo and then Google will show you everywhere that that image is on the internet. It's a great way to be able to keep track of if your image is being shared, let's say on a a blog somewhere or like a painting blog or let's say someone has shared a particular image of mine on a mom's uh, nursery decor blog then it kind of gives me an idea of oh I should be marketing more to uh, expectant mothers so it's a great way to get feedback on your artwork and where it's being shared and it gives you a great insight as to who your target market is so I, I highly recommend it just for that alone but I happen to be using that and I came back with the shocking discovery that that the the image that is usually most requested it happens to be um, uh, a black panther that I have painted in the past and it was being used as an album cover. Um, a musician had decided to use it for his album cover. So uh, uh, it did not take very long for me to realize that my image was uh, on the cover of his CD of an album and it was being sold on iTunes, on Amazon, Spotify had it, it was on YouTube. Um, it was essentially all over the internet and I of course did not give my permission uh, for this to be used and I was extremely frustrated, quite angry and um, I, I knew that I needed to do something about it. it this was something that I really, I, I couldn't just let go. A, it was in the United States, so I felt like I did have some legal recourse, so that was good. Um, but I, you know, you, you, can, you can pick and choose your battles, I guess is what I'm saying, and when someone is selling a few iPhone cases uh, overseas, you know, you 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 kind of sometimes you're like, well, okay, that is that's not really affecting my lifestyle. It's not. It's yeah, it sucks, but it's not. It's not the end all, be all. So I'm you know just gonna let that go. But this was a big deal because from here, if I were to Google uh, this image, uh, this person's album cover was coming up before my own website. So I knew that I had to do something. So what I did was I contacted a lawyer 
and uh, the lawyer, it, first of all, you, you have to consult with a copyright lawyer. You have to consult with somebody who specializes in copyright law. I, at one time, thought, oh, well, lawyers, they're all the same, right? <laughs> of course, that's not true, but I'm naive. I have never, you know, really needed a lawyer for anything. And I thought, well, surely, you know, if I go to a lawyer here in town where I live, it's they're going to be able to give me some information. Not true. If you really need a, you need to go to lawyers who specialize in what it is that you need advice on. So this lawyer told me that unless this person is making thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars more than what I can afford to spend on legal fees, then it is not worth pursuing in a court of law. Now, when I received this news, it was, I was like, are you kidding me? Really? This is extremely frustrating because I can't afford to spend thousands of dollars that I don't have in order to, you know, get this removed just to have to turn around in another two months and fight another legal battle. So I, I weighed out my options and I decided that what I was going to do was try and take matters into my own hands. Um, this uh, lawyer had stated that I might want to do small claims court, um, recommended that if I do want to take matters into my own hands to find out uh, the name of the record label of, the, of this person's uh, album and uh, contact them directly and let them know that this was copyright infringement and that this album needed to be taken down. Well, I attempted to do that. I was un unsuccessful in doing that. So I went straight to Amazon, straight to iTunes, straight to Spotify, YouTube, and I did all of this paperwork myself. There are copyright infringement forms that you can fill out if this happens to you. And so you have to provide proof that it's your work. You have to uh, because there are a lot of people who do this uh, that are being fraudulent. If they have like some vendetta against somebody, they will file a false claim. Um, YouTube got back to me and told me that this happens all the time. So, you know, you have to really go out of your way to prove that you are who you, that you are who you say you are. And so it took me about three weeks to get all of this stuff together and fill out the proper forms and wait. And I waited and waited. Um, in the meantime, I'm getting more and more angry because it's taking away from painting time. It's taping, taking away from my business time, of which I'm trying to make a living the honest way. And so I had built this up in my head that this person was attacking me personally and I, I was just so upset about it. Um, so anyway, long story short, um, all of the places, Amazon, YouTube, iTunes, everywhere, they all got back to me and they, they discovered that, yes, I was telling the truth. They researched my page. They researched my Etsy shop, saw that I had my print up for sale that it was mine and they did remove, they sent me notices stating that they did remove this person's information, um, removed the album, the artwork, removed everything. So everything had been taken down. Um, some sites were w within 24 hours. Amazon was actually really good. Within 24 hours, they had it gone. Um, iTunes took a lot longer. Uh, to do. Uh, Spotify took a couple of weeks to do, but eventually I did get everything taken down. So that was good. I felt like that I had at least, re I had regained a bit of control. I was relieved about that. That was fantastic. So, and as a side note, I want to let you know that we build these things up in our heads that people, like again, we're getting personally attacked for things. People are taking advantage of us deliberately and who are they to think that they can do this? And 
it, you know, we build these stories up in our head when we don't have all of the information. We all do this, not in just in this case, but it, it's, I think it's human nature. And automatically, you know, when something bad happens to you, it's our natural instinct to automatically go to the worst possible case scenario that we're being stolen from and there people are laughing behind our backs and saying, oh my God, what a sucker she is because she doesn't know what we're doing or we don't care or, you know, and surprisingly enough, the musician who had taken my artwork for his own contacted me with an apology. And I was stunned by that um, and it really made me feel a lot better. It also made me realize that there are people out there who really just don't know that what they're doing is illegal. I mean, initially I thought, well, this is a fellow artist. This person should know better. If you're an artist and you sing and someone steals your song, you would be upset. It's no different than, you know, why are you stealing my artwork? We're both artists, so how can you not understand this? But he did not have to reach out to me and apologize, but he did. So that just goes to show me that, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not always the, that we are, that it's, a, that it's a personal vendetta against us, I guess is what I'm saying. So before you get really devastated and upset and lose sleep over something, take a deep breath and maybe give that person the benefit of the doubt. Reach out to that person if it's, if it's an avenue that you can go through. I tried to do that, first of all, but I couldn't. I couldn't figure out how to get a hold of this person, so I had to go directly to the source. I had to go to Amazon. I had to go to iTunes. So um, so that would be sort of my recommendation to do that first. Um, also, I want to bring to your attention, this is probably the most important thing about this video. This is if you are a beginner, if you are an experienced uh, artist that is selling on the internet. I just came across this last night, but there are always, this is my point, there are always going to be sites that you are going to have to fight. You have to keep on top of your artwork, whether you're new, whether you're old, whether you've been doing this for a month, whether you've been doing this for six years like I have. There will always be somebody who is ready to take advantage um, of what it is that you're doing and market it as their own. So you need to take precautions from the moment that you put your first piece of artwork up on the internet. Do a low resolution image. And I recommend doing a watermark. Yes, they can Photoshop your watermark out because it doesn't take anything to do that. I still put a watermark up just because, not necessarily, be, I mean, it, a, if I can make it any more difficult, even if it takes them an extra five minutes to Photoshop it out, fine. It does. It takes me two seconds to put a watermark up. If I can make it even just that one more hurdle for them to have to go through, I'm happy in doing that. Secondly, if your work is being shared, I've had work shared all over the place um, on Instagram, all over Google, uh, several images that are really pretty popular. And there are people that don't give me credit who share it, but if they, if they leave my watermark on, then if someone else finds it, then they can come back to my shop on their own. So not only is it for your protection, but it's also to lead people back to your shop if, if those who have shared your work don't give you proper credit or forget to do that. I mean, a lot of people just don't. They love the image, they share it, and sometimes they just don't think about saying, you know, artist is so-and-so or whatever. So I always recommend doing a watermark um, in addition to that. So definitely that and low resolution. Low resolution is key, guys, because if you put a low resolution up and someone saves that to their computer, whatever it is that they try and reproduce for whatever it is that they want to resell, it's going to be a really lousy image. They're not going to get 
repeat customers. They are not going to get anyone who is really going to be happy with that work. Um, and then hopefully they will come to you as the source where they know they're gonna get uh, the real deal, high quality image. So that's very important. <clears throat> last night, this is the last thing I wanted to mention. Last night I was on Google and I found a website that is lifting uh, images from, if you happen to be on Amazon Handmade, they are lifting images from ha Amazon Handmade and creating a website where they it looks like they are representing you, the artist. They uh, have created, a, for me, they've created a page on their website. It looks like it could be sort of a knockoff Amazon site where it's like, okay, they are representing lots of different artists and and then the money goes back to the artist. No, this site has taken my images from Amazon Handmade. They've lifted my text from Amazon Handmade and they have created a, a page on their website that makes it look like they are selling my work on my behalf I did not give them any permission to use this, any images, any text. I don't know who these people are, but I'm gonna tell you the name of their site so that you can go there and make sure that your images, if, especially if you are on Amazon Handmade, because if you Google this, there are a lot of people who are in the same boat that I am. They are having issues with this site as well, saying they did not get their permission. So the name of the site is Bahrain, it's B-A-H-R-A-I-N dot desertcart dot com. Go to that website um, and just Google or just search in the search bar uh, your shop name. Make sure that your work is not up there. This place serves Beirut and a few other places and uh, Again, they're out of the country, so there's no way for me to really reach this company. I have no idea how to get any of this removed. Um, all you can do is bring awareness to it sometimes. Don't, all, don't ever feel like that you are just out of luck, that you just are feeling defeated. Um, I had mentioned in my last video having sort of like a watchdog group together. And even though that's proving to be very difficult to actually do, you can make other people aware that this is happening. That's why I'm telling you, if you check and see that this is happening to you, then you can tell other people. Um, there is uh, websites that you can go to where you can say, hey, this is happening. Don't go to this particular site because they are selling knockoffs of my work and you know it makes me look bad this site is particularly bad because it makes it look like it's coming from me um that they are that they are just uh i i don't even i don't even know what to call it it's like they're setting up shop but i fulfill the order is make it it's what it looks like but it, it isn't so it may, i don't even think that they are sending anything out. I think they're just collecting money. Um, I, I, because they can't, they don't have any of this stuff to actually ship out. And it says that it's imported from the USA, like it's coming from me, but obviously it's not. So anyway, um, check that out, make sure, and constantly search your name, search your shop name, make sure that you know where your work is because like I said, one thing comes to a close and then before I know it, something else is popping up and there's always something that you are going to have to deal with or at least that you should be made aware of. So uh, that is pretty much it. I don't want to take up any more of your time because you know I can talk on this forever. So um, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope that you feel like you have some sort of recourse at least um, or a better understanding of what it means to be able to take control back of work that you've had stolen. And um, I wish you guys the best of luck. Please don't let this discourage you from selling online. 
the pros do still outweigh the cons. You just do what you can do and the things that you can't do anything about, you have to let that stuff go because if you don't, it is going to weigh upon you. You're going to you're it'll leave a bitter taste in your mouth and then you will you know, you might give up on your dream of being able to do this. Um, and you don't want to let anybody stop you from doing what it is that you love. Bottom line, don't let anybody stop you from doing that. Just let the rest fall away and do what you can do. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed and you would like to, please do that and click on the notification bell so that you can get future videos from me because YouTube doesn't always share when new videos come up. And I will see you guys soon. So thanks a lot, guys. Take care. Bye.